Hey, I'm Jake. I make RPG supplements and videos about Pathfinder 2, or pfft 2. I love this system. We're doing more of it now. How the while we're continuing with Minotaurs. Thank you for being here with me. Let's go. Minotaurs stock complex passageways, whether natural or artificial, and are masters of stone architecture. Inquisitive and steadfast, these bovine humanoids spend their lives perfecting the pursuit that calls to them, which can sometimes lead them far from the enclaves where they were raised. Minotaurs are originally from the Iblidos Archipelago, but have spread far and wide across Galarian, forming close-knit communities often near mountains or beneath the surface of the earth. Though sometimes mistaken for simple brutes, minotaurs have scholars and warriors alike. Those who can look past their appearance will find an affinity for building and navigation as well as creative problem solving. That's something I love about minotaurs in myth. They're fucking geniuses. The myth many minotaurs tell of their origins is one of craft, curses, and misunderstanding. Millennia ago, Iblidos was filled with Iblidos, fun word to say. Millennia ago, Iblidos was filled with living deities who walked among and ruled the mortal people. A stonemason named Tavdranos, admired by mortals and hero gods alike, received a vision from a hero god to create a glorious temple. Though the myth doesn't name which one. The mason found the images of the vision murky, scrambled glimpses of twisting col columns, charging bulls, and a defiant stand made by an unknown figure. It was hardly a detailed commission, but one does not refuse a divine order. The mason labored for 17 years before his task was done. That's something else I love about Minotaurs. They're dedicated. They do loyalty well. The three-story temple celebrated the glory of the hero god and their sacred animal, the bull. Upon the hero god's arrival, Tavdranos expected to be met with praise and congratulations. But the deity flew into a rage instead. Those flying rages, they'll get ya. Tavdranos had misunderstood the vision, for the bull was a hated beast, not a celebrated ally. As punishment for this accidental insult, the hero god cursed Tavdranos. I hate your name. You need to change it. With the hated shape of the bull. Angered by both the curse and his failure to please the deity, the mason retreated to a series of caves under the temple, where he continued his work as the first minotaur. So obviously we're twisting the, the myth of uh, Lord Minos a little bit. It's not the same thing. Whatever. You can make it be whatever you want to. The Greek myth was a lot more hateful, so I understand. If you want to play a character with strength of body who expresses themselves through craft more than words, you should play a minotaur. You might decorate your hooves and hones with designs or colors of personal significance. Be adept at na navigation and puzzles. I love that they have like hoof bling later. They have like little jewels on their hooves. Others might be intimidated by your size or think you calculating. Yeah. Others also might think you can see through stone. All right. Physical description. Minotaurs are tall, bulky humanoids with the bovine feature features such as horns, hooves, and elongated faces. Their fur patterns are frequently monotone and deep browns or blacks, though white or gray aren't uncommon. They sound cute. Though the large size of a minotaur might cause one think they are... What? That's not right. Though the large size of a minotaur might cause one to think they are clumsy. I hate typos. The truth is quite the opposite. Minotaur hooves rest on a delicate balance point, making their footfalls quiet and precise. However, when there is a need to be heard, the steps of a minotaur can fall like thunder. A minotaur's horns are a source of pride and often accented by pieces of fashion. Those with longer horns add rings and chains around them cast in whatever rare metals are affordable or die or engrave patterns along them. Those with not much horn to speak of aw, instead shave their fur around the base of the horns, possibly adding stylish circular tattoos to the surrounding skin or fitting metal caps onto their tips. This draws attention to an otherwise overlooked feature. Poor little horns. Start with the stats. Rarity, uncommon. Hit points, 10. Yay! Size, large. Yay! Speed, 25 feet, because large just basically means that you take up a 2x2 two two square. It doesn't actually increase your reach. It just makes you bigger. Attribute boosts. Strength, constitution, and free. Attribute flaws. Charisma! Because they're not that eloquent, I suppose? I think I said speed 25 feet. Speed 25 feet. Languages. Common, Jotun, and additional languages to your intelligence modifier positive. Traits. Beast. Humanoid. And Minotaur. Okay. They have dark vision. And they have horns. The horns do 1d8 piercing damage. If you don't want to hear story, society, and lore, skip to this time. You'll just get feats. 
Society. Minotaurs typically reside within insular, subterranean, communal enclaves. They take great pride in their architectural prowess, hewing buildings out of stone and natural caves alike. An enclave often has almost twice as many buildings as it needs, with the extra structure serving as functional art. Young minotaurs practice their hunting and stalking skills in the empty buildings, with each generation adding a small expansion or fresco on the walls. Expansions like twisting hallways, unexpected overhangs, shared gardens, and a variety of other such contrivances create numerous social spaces and quiet areas for calm reflection, so long as the traveler is able to keep from becoming lost by the unusual architectural flow. I like this. Myths surrounding minotaurs lead most to believe they are fierce carnivores or even cannibals in the darkest of legends. In reality, most minotaur societies are hunter-gatherers feeding off lichen and other flora. They're veggie sores. Their reputation as fierce hunters stems from monthly rituals when the most accomplished stalkers venture out and bring back dangerous prey. The return of these hunters is one of the few occasions minotaurs indulge in meat, feasting on the kills as a show of gratitude and reverence for the hunter's skills. I could also see them worshipping the earth. Minotaurs tend to be blunt and literal, rarely engaging in overly clever wordplay sarcasm or irony. Ah, that's the penalty to charisma. Flaring nostrils and rolling eyes can be intimidating expressions when viewed by non-minotaurs, but to a minotaur, they can convey a complex story with emotional and even spiritual elements. I, I just see it as, yeah, right. Minotaurs wishing to emphasize a certain emotion occasionally use piercings and tattoos, though minotaurs who lean too heavily into these adornments to look fierce often come off as a bit foolish to their peers. The minotaur saying, an angry bull stamps once and gores twice is both an admonition against overly aggressive displays and a reminder that the creature truly to be feared is one who speaks with their actions. Ibladen minotaurs often have names similar to the names of humans from that archipelago. Minotaur surnames are ever-changing, typically reflecting the most memorable achievement an individual has accomplished. Until adulthood, an Ibladen minotaur bears the surname Tavdronos after the first minotaur. Once they reach maturity, their childhood friends and allies collectively bestow a fitting surname. Minotaurs in adventuring groups might be renamed multiple times by their allies. Sample names. Actilia, Ereasos, Paxidio, Rotherion, Zavmandris. Okay, so they like consonants and Greek. Beliefs. Long traditions of isolation have resulted in most minotaurs taking an even-handed approach to events. Many tend toward an unbiased outlook that allows for adaptation. Those who have poor interactions with other humanoids, particularly those met with violence or intolerance, might choose to recede into a chosen lair, ruin, or fortification that they guard fiercely, which sadly perpetuates the tales of brutal minotaurs. But there are brutal minotaurs, that's why they're a monster. Minotaurs raised by their own people tend to avoid association with deities of any stripe. Little surprise, given their, their creation legend. Divine beings are thought of as petty and uncaring, if not by intent, then by the sheer magnitude of their power. Many minotaurs adopt logical or spiritual philosophies as a way of reconciling their existence. Mysteries are puzzles yet unanswered, ones that can be explained with careful thought and study. When minotaurs decide to follow deities, they're primarily drawn to those concerned with self-improvement and self-control, like Irori and Nethys. Popular edicts. Construct architecture of lasting beauty. So, like, build a house. Seek out ever more perplexing puzzles. Sounds like an adventure. Hone one's prowess. Also, sounds like these are adventures. Popular anathema. Leave fate to godly hands rather than mortal initiative. Pass up the chance to investigate a mystery. Yeah, those are adventures. That's what they do. Now, the Minotaur Heritages. I'm going to insert my own opinions throughout this because, well, I love myth. And I've read a lot about Minotaurs. And sometimes, just, I think people do stupid shit that doesn't make any sense. Minotaur heritages. Minotaurs can often be differentiated by the region of their enclave or the enclave of their ancestors. Choose one of the following minotaur heritages at first level. Ghost bull minotaur. Your fur is as pale as death, possibly from some connection you or your family has to the afterlife, which lets you supernaturally find your way. What? Okay. You can cast Know the Way as an occult innate spell at will. A cantrip is heightened to a spell rank equal to blah, blah, blah. It's a cantrip. In addition, you gain a plus one circumstance bonus against spells or effects that cause the confused condition. That's cool. I like that. You just know what's bullshit. Ghost bull. You know bull. 
Glacier Cavern Minotaur, your fur grows thick and warm, well suited to the frozen mountains in which you reside. You gain cold resistance equal to half your level, minimum of one. Environmental cold effects are one step less extreme for you. I think by now every ancestry should or does have one of these. Little Horn Minotaur. Though no less powerful, your frame and your horns are smaller than those of most other minotaurs. Instead of large, your size is medium. Your, ho your horn's unarmed attack deals 1d6 piercing damage instead of 1d8, but it has the agile trait. And that's nice. Why would you want to be medium instead of large? I guess it's just for the options, because some passageways are 5 feet by 5 feet, and large makes it hard to fit through. So, okay, there's an option. Got it. Roaming Minotaur. Your hooves are broad and powerful, perfect for clearing away rubble as you step. You become trained in survival, or another skill if you're already trained in survival, and gain the terrain expertise skill feat. You ignore difficult terrain caused by natural uneven ground while in the terrain chosen for your terrain expertise feat. Cool. I like that one, because it fits the mythology, the lore. I mean, not the book's lore, the, my lore, the real world lore. Slab Soul Minotaur. Your deep connection with stone and walls allows you to conjure massive slabs of granite that collapse on your foes. You gain the Raise Slabs activity. Yep, doing this. Raise Slabs. Two actions. Earth, divine, frequency, once per day. No, it should be a will. Come on. Effect. Thick slabs of stone rise around you before tilting over. You deal 1d6 bludgeoning damage to all adjacent creatures. Basic reflex save against your class DC or spell DC, whichever is higher. On a critical failure, the creature is also knocked prone. Ooh. At third level, every two levels thereafter, the damage increases by 1d6. That's great. That's so cool. That, that actually might be something that I would bother spending archetype feats on to get. Yeah, it'd be more fre more frequent than once per day, but this is neat. I like that. It's a good earthy addition to Minotaurs. Stalker Minotaur. Despite your heavy frame, you walk on shaggy hooves that muffle your footfalls, allowing you to surprise your prey. You become trained in stealth, or another skill if you were already trained in stealth, and gain the terrain stalker skill feat, except you must choose rubble, and you can sneak no more than 10 feet instead of 5 feet without attempting a stealth check. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Oh, I like. Yeah. Because that sneaking no more than 10 feet instead of 5 feet would apply to all terrain stalker skill feats. So you could take it from multiple terrains and it applies to them too. Because it doesn't say it doesn't. It doesn't say it only applies to rubble. Yeah. Nice. I gotta say, from the image on the left, on your screen. I was hoping that there would be a much heavier spiritual aspect to Minotaurs. I wrote a city that includes Minotaurs and they are the spiritual leaders and that just makes sense to me. Like, freaking look at them. They're cows. Their lore is that they come from the earth, that they have an inner knowing, an inner sense of things. And also, their real world lore, they went through shit. Like hell. And so, they kind of just like, care about being even natured or helpful and honorable. That says spiritual leader to me. I want more spiritual shit. Unfortunately, it seems like they gave it to the centaur instead. Whatever. We can always steal it. Ancestry feats. At first level, you gain one ancestry feat. You gain ancestry feats when you gain ancestry feats. You know how. First level, artisanal crafter. Feat level one. Like many minotaurs, you take pride in creating items made from stone or metal. You become trained in crafting or another skill of your choice if you're already trained in crafting. You gain the specialty crafting skill feat in your choice of blacksmithing, leatherworking, or stonemasonry. I like that. That's neat. I'll never take that. Because you could just use skill feats on that. Next level one feat, cattle speech. You can understand the lowing of cattle and similar animals as its own language. You can ask questions of, receive answers from, and use the diplomacy skill with cattle, bison, antelopes, and other grazing mammals that travel in herds. That's a lot of them. The GM determines which other animals count for this ability. Deer, this is great. Oh, it's so great. From the minotaurs I read about, you know, Kaz the Minotaur and real world mythology. I don't think that Minotaurs would like admit that that's real language to them because they're proud and arrogant usually. It'd be funny like walking through a field, a cow goes, 
man, those two feats are ugly. And the Minotaur in your group just starts chuckling. And nobody knows. I don't know. It's fun. Next level one feat. Eye for Masonry. Your familiarity with architecture allows you to easily spot subtle stonework. You gain a plus two circumstance bonus to perception checks to notice unusual stonework. Great, you're a dwarf. This bonus applies to checks to discover mechanical traps made of stone or hidden within stone as well as secret doors in stone. You're a dwarf. All right. When using athletics to force open a stone door or thievery to disable a device made primarily of stone, you gain plus one circumstance bonus to that check. Okay, cool. This makes sense, though, for minotaurs. Because they know masonry and architecture. I think they should start with the architecture lore. Just because. Next level one feat, friendly nudge, it's one action. Prerequisites, trained in athletics. You don't always have time to wait for your allies to make room, so it's best to politely move them yourself. Attempt an athletics check to shove an ally. You don't need to have a free hand to attempt this check. If your ally is willing, treat the result as one degree of success higher. That's so cool. Neat. This could be fun as a commander. I hope they have other abilities like that. Keen nose. Accustomed to the foul air of underground tunnels, your sense of smell is sharpened and noxious scents are less offensive. That doesn't make any sense. Why would your sense of smell be sharpened if you smell a lot of foul air? Huh? That doesn't make any sense. Okay. I'm probably putting, cutting that part out of the video because who wants to hear that? <laughs> Keen nose. Accustomed to the foul air of underground tunnels, your sense of smell is sharpened and noxious scents are less offensive. You gain scent as an imprecise sense with a range of 30 feet. You also gain a plus one circumstance bonus to fortitude saves against all factory effects that cause the second condition. I like the ability. The explanation doesn't make any sense to me, but fine. The ability's cool. And see? Huff bling. Look at that. Little stars and little diamonds. It's great. Minotaur lore. You were raised by a minotaur. Minotaur lore. You were raised in a minotaur enclave or have spent a great deal of time studying your culture and ancestry. You become trained in society and stealth. If you would automatically become trained in one of those skills from your background or class, for example, you instead become trained in a skill of your choice. You also gain the additional lore general feat for minotaur lore. I like that the additional lore general feat is now tied to ancestral lores because it automatically increases. Society and stealth. That's just interesting. Their ancestry, their species, is good at hiding and sneaking around. Minotaur weapon familiarity. Your elders taught you to wield weapons that can split skulls and smash through shields. You have a familiarity with the battle axe, falchion, glaive, and great axe. For the purposes of proficiency, you treat these martial weapons as simple weapons. At fifth level, whenever you get a critical hit with one of these weapons, you get its critical specialization effect. Cool. Next, pantheon magic. The touch of divine meddling still runs through you, whether you want it or not. Choose one cantrip from the divine spell list. You can cast this cantrip as a divine innate spell at will. Do, 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 that's all it does. Okay. I want to read this little inset for Minotaur adventurers. Minotaurs have a reputation for being fearsome melee combatants. While this can be true, and there's no shortage of barbarians or fighters among Minotaur adventurers, a Minotaur can do very well in many classes. The keen mind and love of puzzles produces many an investigator and wizard. So many puns are going to be coming out of this. While minotaurs with a taste for the unique find themselves walking the path of an inventor or thaumaturge. The ancestry's affinity for earth and stone can also lead them to join the ranks of druids or sorcerers of the elemental bloodline. Those who wield the divine typically do so by honing inherent power as sorcerers or oracles rather than by supplicating to a higher entity as clerics or witches. I can see them bowing down as a witch. I mean, of course it's me, witches. But since they like don't like gods that doesn't mean that they wouldn't serve a powerful supernatural entity and get power from them it means that gods are abusive with their power so i guess it would be more like a like legally binding lawful balanced orderly contract with a patron rather than yes i'll do your will master i can see that Fifth level feats. Alarming disappearance. Prerequisites. Expert in stealth. Your ability to move unseen is startling for one your size, causing panic among your enemies. When you successfully hide when previously observed, creatures you are hidden from become frightened one. <laughs> They're then temporarily immune to alarming disappearance for an hour. I love it! <laughs> Where'd that nine foot tall minotaur go with a battle axe? I don't know. 
<laughs> That's perfect. That's a good feat. Beast of Burden. Your broad frame can allow you to carry weights that immobilize smaller creatures. Increase your maximum and encumbered bulk limits by four. You can rest normally while wearing medium armor. That's not worth a fifth level feat. But okay, it's cool that it's there for flavor, if nothing else. Labyrinthine Echoes. You can make your voice reverberate off any surface. Once per day, you can cast Ventriloquism as an occult innate spell. At 7th level, this spell is heightened to 2nd rank. Okay, fine. That's an excuse to get a Ventriloquism spell. The name doesn't fit the power. Natural Orienteering. There are a few twisting paths that can disorient you. When you roll a success on a survival check to sense direction or track, you get a critical success instead. I really don't think that's a necessary feat, but I fucking love it. This is what Minotaur should have. They should have an unerring sense of direction. They should know where the fuck they're going and where the fuck they've been, and how to trap people in terrain. Next feat, Puzzle Solver. Frequency once per hour. You have a natural affinity for problem solving and the unknown. Whenever you attempt to recall knowledge about a subject or creature, you gain a plus one circumstance bonus to your next skill check regarding that creature or subject, even if you didn't succeed at the check. This bonus increases to plus two if you are a master in the skill used to recall knowledge. That's neat, thaumaturge. Yeah, let's do that. That's cool. I like that. Next inset panel. Minotaurs and other ancestries. The desire to learn has caused minotaurs to wander far and wide, and as such, they can be encountered far from their original home in Iblidos. Preferring mountainous or underground regions, minotaurs who put down roots often live with ancestries of a like mind, such as dwarves, hobgoblins, and orcs. The nation of Oprak in the Inner Sea has a small subculture of minotaurs that assist with engineering works across the Mindspin Mountains. Some minotaurs who migrated east from Iblidos made it as far as the islands of Minata and Tian Sha, where they were surprised to encounter another bovine ancestry known as Sarangay. The first interactions revealed a clear separation between the cultures. Sarangay, it's S-A-R-A-N-G-A-Y, Sarangay, took pride in their origins, while minotaurs strove to move past theirs. Whenever a minotaur is mistaken for a sarangay, they politely point out the many differences with a good-natured chuckle. I bet if I had read that section in the Tian Sha book, I would know how to pronounce it because they have pronunciation guides in the, pa in the side panel of all of those chapters. See, again, this minotaur is all like, spiritually, I call the ancestors, and yet they're all about finding things and goring people with their horns. Next fifth level feat, stretching reach. You can leverage your size and muscle to extend your reach and attack more distant foes. When you wield a melee weapon that requires two hands and doesn't have reach, you can change between a typical two-handed grip and an extended two-handed stretch using an interact action. Weapons wielded in your extended stretch gain a reach of 10 feet. This does not take an action. I love this. I mean, okay, it takes the interact action to switch between, but it's not like every turn you have to do it. Neat, very neat. Ninth level, Friendly Fling, the one you've all been waiting for. Two actions, manipulate trait requirements, you are adjacent to an ally. You can scoop up your friends with your horns to hurl them across the battlefield. Pick up an adjacent willing ally who is smaller than you and toss them to an unoccupied space you can see within 20 feet. This can be medium sized, it's not just goblins and halflings anymore. Since you are using your horns, you don't need to have any hands free to do this. Fuck yeah. Your ally's movement doesn't trigger reactions, obviously. Your ally ends this movement on their feet and doesn't take damage from the fall, but takes 1d6 piercing damage from your horns. Oh, that's messed up. If your ally ends this movement within melee reach of at least one enemy, they can make a melee strike against an enemy within their reach as a reaction. This is a commander. This is another commander type thing. Please somebody make a commander minotaur or I'm going to make an NPC and you're going to have to deal with it. Next level nine feet. God, I love that one. That friendly fling is good. Goring charge, two actions. Driven by the momentum of your thundering steps and powerful mass, your horns can pierce your foes. Stride twice, then make a horn strike. If you moved at least 20 feet from your starting position, your horn strike also deals 1d6 persistent bleed damage. That's good. Yeah, this ancestry is good in melee combat. 
Siphon Torment, next feat. Your progenitors suffered greatly at the hands of a curse, a fate you willingly take upon yourself rather than let fall upon others. Once per day, you can cast Claim Curse as an innate divine spell. When you do, the target creature gains temporary hit points equal to your level. Well, that's kind of cool. For a ninth level feat, I'm not going to take it. It's just going to come up so rarely. And even if it does, it's once per day. Like, this is not a very useful feat. Next level 9 feat, Stone Passage. Two actions. It's a, it has a, the divine trait. Prerequisites. Slab Soul Minotaur Heritage. Frequency once per hour. Calling upon your knowledge of stonework and inherent magic, you momentarily make a section of stone insubstantial, allowing you to pass through. Stride up to your speed. You can move through stone or rock objects, such as walls, as if they were unoccupied spaces. Fuck yeah. If you end your movement inside a square that you normally would not be able to pass through, you are thrown back to the last unoccupied square you moved into. That's great. That's a really cool feat. Granted, at that level, you could do that with a potion. But that costs quite a bit of money, actually. <laughs> And, and this is once per hour, and it's also only you, and that can be very useful. The potion affects the wall, not you, so everybody could pass through it. 13th level feats, Phantom Charm. It's a free action, Divine Fortune. Prerequisites, Ghost, Bull, Minotaur, Heritage, Frequency once per day, Trigger, you attempt a check that would be subject to a misfortune effect. You can harness the spiritual connection in your blood, allowing you to shift the negative threads of fate. You negate the misfortune effect and gain a plus two circumstance bonus to the triggering check. Cool. I guess. But hero points exist, and it's a 13th level feat. Meh. Next level 13 feat. Shift the little ones. One action, prerequisites, expert in athletics, friendly nudge. With your large size, you need to be careful around your smaller friends. You have learned to move in such a way that it gives others the chance to make room for you. Stride up to your speed. If you end your movement in a position where one or more of your spaces are occupied by an ally, each of those allies can immediately step as a free action so they are no longer occupying the same space as you. That's amazing as a large creature. If this isn't possible, you must end your movement so that you aren't sharing a space with an ally as normal. This is great. This Please take this. This is important. If you're going to be a melee character of any kind and a minotaur, you probably need this feat. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's really hard to maneuver in combat as a large creature. Believe me, I've run a lot of large monsters. Threatening Pursuit. One action. Auditory. Prerequisites. Expert in Intimidation and Stealth. Requirement. You are not observed by any enemies within 60 feet. You emit a terrifying growl and snort, stamping your hooves for all to hear so that they know that you hunt them. Oh, it's nice. Attempt an intimidation check to demoralize all enemies within 30 feet. And you do not take a penalty for not sharing a language. Fuck yeah. If the targets are in a maze or similarly difficult to navigate location, you get a plus two circumstance bonus to this check and the range increases to 60 feet. Each target is temporarily immune for an hour. That's great. Oh, I love it. I, I love it from a lore perspective. I freaking love it. It fits the myth so well. And it's also cool. It's useful. And a AOE demoralize is super powerful. 17th level feats. Begin Stampede. Three actions, visual trait. The sight of you charging forward into battle emboldens your allies to follow. You stride up to twice your speed and make a horn's melee strike. If your strike hits and damages an enemy, each ally within 60 feet who saw you hit can use a reaction to stride up to twice their speed. But each must end their stride closer to you than where they started. This sounds so much like a commander. Again. Each such ally that strides gains a plus one status bonus to their first strike on their next turn. I mean, this is really great, but it's a commander power. I mean, a commander has an ability that's very similar to, th similar to this. Anyway, obviously, it's a good ability if they put it in a class two. This is good. Into the Labyrinth. Calling on your connection to Minotaurs of Myth, you shunt an enemy into a complex maze full of puzzles of your own devising. Once per day, you can cast Quandary as an 8th rank occult innate spell, which takes the form of a labyrinth instead of a puzzle room. Targets cannot attempt to use occultism to escape the spell as normal for Quandary. It's a maze spell. But they can use survival to find their way through the labyrinth's corridors. Oh, that's great. I'm actually quite happy with this ancestry. It feels right for the Minotaur. I wish there was a little bit more of a nod to the spiritual side of them, like being able to divine portents or something. 
but that's the only thing missing in my opinion and to me that's a good job they did a very good job I want to read this other little inset because I haven't read it yet the Minotaur Prince of Absalom Nuar spirit skin wait it's probably Nuar spirits kin was born in an enclave of Minotaurs within the Cortos Mounts smaller in stature than his siblings and with unusually white fur Noir relocated to the city of Absalom after being banished by his kin. In a chance encounter, he rescued the Primarch from being assaulted by angry sailors and was then given the honorific title of the Minotaur Prince of Absalom. He now resides in a lavish compound called the Torian Embassy, from which he attempts to rekindle ties with his enclave. Cute little piece of lore. Not necessary. It does add flavor, and anything that can add flavor to a new ancestry is important. That's why if you didn't listen to the lore and society section before, you can click here to go back to the beginning so you can listen to it. I really like the Minotaur. Please, people, play a Minotaur in melee combat, and somebody tell me how their Minotaur commander worked out. I'm probably just going to make one anyway, though. <laughs> And if you end up wanting to see that, you'll probably see it on a live stream that I'm doing. Thank you for your time for Howl the Wild again. There's going to be more Howl the Wild coming up. This is great. This is a good book. I love this book. It's such a cool book. And of course, I love Pathfinder. It's not just the book. Pathfinder is good. These, these people put in a lot of time and creativity into what they're doing. I can tell because... It takes me a lot of time and creativity to come up with some of the complex shit that I've come up with, like the city that the spiritual leaders are minotaurs. Thank you, patrons, for being here. I appreciate you guys sticking with me and helping out. If anybody else wants to be a patron, click the link in the description. Join us on Discord to talk. You don't have to be a patron. You can just, like, come to Discord to chat about stuff. And that also helps me, like, figure out things for future thumbnails or future topics for videos. So if you guys just want to chat, put in your two cents, come to Discord. Link's in the description. Thank you for being here. Next Hell of the Wild video is coming up soon. I almost said movie. It's basically a movie. <laughs> oh, what am I covering in that one? What am I Oh, I don't know yet. Because I haven't seen the comments. I don't even know what's going to happen yet. Okay, this is exciting. Bye.